you beautiful people, what's up? It's your girl Carla J back again with another video and today's video I'm super duper excited about because about three years ago I released a series called Stories Behind the Lens and I only put out one episode but we're gonna bring it back and if you didn't know what you probably don't because your girl's kind of irrelevant. I have five years working professionally in Los Angeles radio. I worked for eight different radio stations as a video content producer, which meant I got to do photo and video for some of the top A-list artists out there, such as Billie Eilish, John Legend, and Five Seconds of Summer. So stories behind the lens is exactly what it sounds like. It's me sharing stories from these amazing, awesome, heartwarming opportunities. <laughs> So today's episode is all about the Jonas Brothers. <sighs> I am a huge Jonas Brothers fan. I have loved them since I was a teen living in a small town up in Northern California. I would listen to their music religiously. I would have posters all over my bedroom and I swore I was going to marry them one day. I literally had OJD, Obsessive Jodas Disorder. The Jodas Brothers really helped me through some tough times. In high school, I was bullied a lot and I was made fun of for the, like, the most stupidest things ever. But the Jonas Brothers really lifted my spirits and helped me push through some really, really, really tough times. And I just want to thank the universe real quick for making this all come full circle. Because here I am, girl in her bedroom, crying over being made fun of for something really dumb. To 10 years later, I'm meeting all three of the Jonas Brothers. I'm shooting their interview, editing that interview, and then later on, I get to shoot them at the Hollywood Bowl. So one of the radio stations that I worked for hosted a huge concert called We Can Survive, and it benefited um, cancer research. It's a really awesome event. Okay, so this first photo right here is of Kevin Jonas. But when the Jonas Brothers came on stage, I was hit with a ton of emotions. I was just feeling excited. I was nervous. So this photo of Kevin Jonas here, I really like how I edited it. I know it's like a little bit more artsy fartsy, but this is the first one that I wanted to share because it's definitely one of the first in the camera roll of like the Jonas Brothers section. And yeah. So this next photo is Joe, who I thought I was gonna marry. This photo, let me tell you, I am very proud of it. And I know it's not the best photo ever. And I know it's not the best Jonas Brothers photo, like, ever. And I think that's, like, the one thing that I just really want to emphasize. I'm not the best photographer ever. Let me tell you, there's some photographers out there that are phenomenal. And they're up here, and I'm, like, way down here. But what I really, really, really want to emphasize is how proud I am in this moment. The thing is, working in the music industry, it is heartbreaking. That will literally shatter your soul and your heart. For me to be in this moment, I had worked so incredibly hard. Tears, blood, sweat, endless hours, no sleep, the whole thing, just to get to this moment. And I am just so incredibly proud of myself. And I love this photo of Joe because he just looks like he is having a grand old time looking down to the audience and I was like right below him in the pit and yeah. So this photo, Nick Jonas, and I love it because of the composition. I do like how I colored it. Fun fact, so I wanna say two years ago at another We Can Survive that I worked, and this was before the Jonas Brothers like got back together. This was when I was still a promotions assistant and not a video producer. And I was working upstairs in one of the broadcast studios and we had these huge signage boards that all the artists had to get signed. And it was my duty to make sure they got signed by the artists. So Nick Jonas came up to the step and repeat to get some t um, pictures taken. I had him the Sharpie and he's signing away on all these signage boards and he holds my hand. Okay, he didn't like hold it, but I had my hand out so he could give me back the Sharpie and when he does, I say, thank you, Nick. He has 
had the audacity to look me in the eyes and I felt my soul crumble into a puddle of ah. So he hands me back, he hands me back the Sharpie and holds my hand a little bit, looks me in the eye and says, no, thank you. What? I thought that was like a really cool moment and for it to happen like two years later, me taking photos of the Jonas Brothers, this was like a huge moment. So this next photo is of Kevin Jonas and again, composition, it's all stylistic and I think that's the thing about photography and art in general is that it's all subjective. So what I feel I love and think is beautiful, you might not think the same way. So as you look at this photo, you might think, yo, your editing sucks, but I feel like as an artist, everyone has their own like eye and stylistic choices and every single piece of artwork is beautiful because it comes from a form of self-expression and it comes from your soul and your heart and someone who loves the Jonas Brothers like this was such a huge moment for me that a lot of these came with passion let me tell you when I was editing these photos I was definitely shedding a tear because I couldn't believe that this was actually happening but I do like the way that this was edited it's just like dark and gloomy even though Kevin is such a ray of sunshine yes Next photo, okay, so this one is of Joe again. So this photo of Joe, I really love mainly because of the lights in the background that's shining through from the other side. Whenever I do live concert photographies, I try to be in a position where I could get the artist with lights through like their arms and the microphone or like from their head. I really like that lens flare look. I just wanted to put my camera down and like sing and dance and jump around and enjoy the Joe Robes as a fan. But you know, I was also working and also like I was singing along with the camera and my hand, I'm literally like, I'm a sucker for you. So this photo of Nick Jonas, I love because he's just singing, he's doing his thing. He's sharing his passion with the audience while I'm sharing my passion with them. So while they're singing these songs and the crowd's going wild and totally loving their set, I'm doing what I love in the photo pit and taking photos of them. So in a sense, it was kind of like the universe bringing the both of us together and sharing and our passions just merging as one, which is as close to marrying the Joe Bros as I'll ever get. And I'm totally okay with that. God, it was such an awesome night and it was just so freaking cool. So several months ago, before the Jonas Brothers performed at We Can Survive, they visited the radio station I was working for and they were there to promote Sucker. The thing about this interview was that, of course, all the higher ups and you know upper management, they knew about this interview, but I literally didn't know till one of the last moments. So, when I was about to leave the office, you know, I say goodbye to everyone. I step into my boss's office to tell him goodbye. And before I leave, he tells me, oh, like, come in here real quick. I got to tell you about the shoot tomorrow. And he's like, I'm really sorry about the shoot. It's super last minute, but I need you to come in at 630 to help me set up. It's a really big deal. It's huge. Like, I just need you there. And, you know, the thing is, I lived at that time, I lived in Yorba Linda, which is Orange County. And so I lived about 40 miles away from our station. I was just like, of course, like I'd come in, he'd never ask unless it was really important. Or if he was doing your girl a solid. And then he goes, oh, okay. Also, Carla, it's for the Jonas Brothers. Oh my God. The next morning, if I had to be at the station at 6.30, I knew there wasn't gonna be too, too much traffic. I do this thing where if I have to be somewhere by 6.30, I have to be in the parking lot by 6.15, which means I have to leave like by this certain time. I go to the station and I'm setting up and I have like, jitters because I knew like this was happening. Um, when they first come in, I'm towards the back by the door and I'm holding it open. Jonas Brothers are coming in. They're saying hello to everybody. And I am like, I'm like, oh, hi, hi, nice to meet you. And on the inside, I'm like, <laughs> they are nice. Their team is really nice. And that's something that I really, really appreciate because when the team is super nice and helpful, it is smooth interview and smooth sailing and we love that. They do their interview and the whole time it's Carla J work mode. They leave the studio, they do their liners, which is basically like, hey, we're the Jonas Brothers, you listen to 97.1 Amp Radio, all that little things that you hear on air. And then after that, 
Of course I had to ask permission the night before, but I asked if I could take a picture with the Joe Bros and I, they said yes. <laughs> Yeah, I got to meet the Jonas Brothers and when I met them, you know, shook their hands, everything, and I was like, oh, thank you so much for your music. It was really quick, but you know, just wanted to keep it quick, very professional, they were so nice. And yeah, that basically sums it up. That is the end of episode two of Stories Behind the Lens, Jonas Brothers edition, reliving all of these moments with you, looking at these photos and talking about when they came to visit the station is really instilling and like instigating a lot of warm, awesome feelings in me and that just making me real, real happy, especially in the middle of a pandemic. I hope watching this video, if you made it to the end, that it really motivates you and inspires you to not just chase after your dreams, but to actually catch them. If you told me a long time ago as a teen that I would get to work with the Jonas Brothers, I would not believe you. Like who would have thought the girl living in a small town listening to their songs would be in the same room as them and not because I bought a VIP ticket, not because I saved all my money and you know got a VIP meet and greet extravaganza for a concert, which you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but because it literally fell into my lap. I worked hard and I, you know, grew in my career to be in the position where I got to work with the Jonas Brothers. And I hope that really motivates you to, you know, continue thriving, to work really hard and to just do you, boo. And to anyone that's watching this right now that may not be in the best mindset, it's going through a really tough time. I wanna say that it does get better. Just, you know, keep doing you, try to stay as positive as you can, be good, manifest beautiful things. And in the words of the Jonas Brothers, have faith, restart. If you like this video and are enjoying this series so far, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and hit that notification bell for all the fun stuff. Meet me in the comments down below and let me know what's your favorite Jonas Brothers song. Have you had a fun, crazy encounter with them too? And did you have OJD growing up? Like, let's discuss. Let's discuss all things Jonas. And all of my social media info is gonna be in the bottom bar below. If you wanna see more of my photos of the Jonas Brother and actually wanna watch that interview, um, I'm gonna put a link in the description bar of my online portfolio so you could check it out. And yeah, um, be good, stay safe, manifest great things, um, wash your hands, wear your mask, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.